I'm Catherine Kurtz, and you're watching Ghost Chat New England. Good evening, uh, Stephen Butler. Uh, I'm live down here in Charlottesville, Virginia, and I'm with the the Master of Medieval Studies and uh, contributor to uh, Police Forces, um, a queen and a duchess once in the uh, Society of Creative Anachronism. Uh, a countess. Countess. Yes. Uh, Catherine Kurtz. Welcome, Catherine. Uh, Thank very you. glad to have you here with us on Ghost Chat New England. Um, I understand you're here to to. Uh, actually do a, uh, a presentation for the festival of the book. Yes. So what uh, you've been doing that for a number of years, haven't you? This is only my second year actually. Oh, okay. We've only been in Virginia for three years this week. And before that we lived for 21 years in Ireland. Which I know. Was very different. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, when, when, I, when I saw on the back cover of your books that's, that's where you lived, I, I said, well, Unlikely they'll get a chance to meet you in person. <laughs> fortunately, the fates intervened, and, and oh, here yes. we are. Um, what I wanted to do is uh, I went ahead and, and, and came up with uh, with a number of questions here that uh, that I want to talk with you about. And the first one is uh, Tolkien once said of his character Faramir, uh, "A new character came in the scene. I'm not sure I didn't. I'm sure I didn't invent him. I did not even want him, though I like him. But there he came walking into the woods. Now, did any of your stories?" ever all of a sudden develop a character that you did not anticipate but you thought wow that's that's pretty good well new characters always make themselves known at the appropriate time if even if you haven't specifically decided who that's going to be minor characters have a, a habit of doing that <laughs> you know that you're going to need a spear carrier right. at such and such a point and uh Sometimes they, they become a far more important character than you right. had anticipated. Sure. And sure. some of my favorite characters started out by being just what I thought were throwaway characters. Can, can, you, can you name one? one? One character that you thought was just going to be a, a drive-by character and uh, he became a central... Probably the most recent one would be uh, Sir Lion Farquhar, who has become the, the governor to the young Alaric Morgan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we see him first without even a name when he's a squire who is sort of keeping an eye on young Alaric, who is about four at that point, okay. uh, while his parents are visiting Corwin. And he takes a liking to him. And the young man, he's a senior squire, and he mm -hmm. is knighted uh, by Alaric's father before they leave to head back to the capital. And they're on their way they're the first day out and Alaric is moping and uh, <laughs> and his mother finally figures out you know 
he really liked Lion. He really misses him. It's right. Like, do you think he would be willing to join the household because he's getting to be of an age when he should not be spending all his time in the company of women? He should sure. start having an, an adult male mm-hmm. role, role model. And so Kenneth, his father, sends one of his knights back to ask Lion mm-hmm. if he'd like to come, and he shows up. And Alaric is just delighted, and he's become a, a major secondary character in subsequent books. Oh, wow. So I'm yeah. playing with him right now, in fact, because Alaric is uh, going to be losing his father in the mm. next uh, six, eight months. Right. And uh, meanwhile, Lion is helping him to sort of fit in with what court life is going to be like when he's officially a Haldane page mm-hmm. and then squire. At this point, it's planned that he will become a, a page first mm-hmm. uh, in Duke Jared's house, okay. who is a, a distant uncle. Right. And um, once his father is killed, of course, it's all change. And uh, he comes back to the capital, and he's he's just starting to learn about some of the other boys that don't like him for various reasons. Mm-hmm. And, you know, why don't they like yeah. me? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a classic, you know, feeling that, that, oh, that yeah. people have? Yeah, you know, he's, young... he's just turning eight, and he knows that being Durini is a dangerous thing, but um, he's been pretty sheltered from that aspect of his life up to this mm-hmm. point. And once his father's gone, he's... Yeah, other than the king, obviously, it's a very powerful protector. Right. But the king can't be there all the time. Exactly. And, and he can't be happen. with the king all right. the time. And one of the the young lads who is a, he's either a senior page or a, a young squire at this point, but he is the nephew of the nasty um, Bishop de Noor, okay, yep. who, whose brother got killed mm-hmm. uh, on the testimony right. of Alaric's mother. And so he's he's got an axe to grind. <laughs> <laughs> now, do any of your stories contain a certain scene that that you took out of your life experience? You know, basically something happened that fit right in with. Uh... Well, aspects of when uh, Tavis O'Neill got his hand cut off. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, I have never had a hand cut off, but I had a finger partially Ooh. amputated in a, a horse riding accident, and. They, they splinted it, to they, they reattached it because mm-hmm. it was three quarters of the way torn mm-hmm. off. It was, it was not nice. And yeah. then they splinted it to the next finger. But for the, about the first week, I mean, they kept me in the hospital because mm-hmm. I was on IV antibiotics. Right. And they had the arm held up like this right. in a, an apparatus to, to keep <laughs> blood from pooling in there. Yeah. And I, I put that scene okay. in, in yeah. uh, how Tavis deals with losing his hand. Oh, yeah. That's that's quite traumatic. Fortunately, you didn't have to go that far. But I was very lucky. I had very skilled surgeons. Thank you, Kaiser Permanente. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>